good afternoon i feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all presented guests speaker and students to the webinar that is directed on more momentous topic the need of ielts for career guiding organized by itpoli bubt student branch itpoli sps bubt sb chapter itpoli pes bubt sb chapter itpoli ies bubt sb chapter and itpoli Council on RFID BBT SB Chapter. Thank you all for finding time and attending today's webinar. Myself Tarikul Islam Rimon, a student of Department of Tripoli and event coordinator of IEEE BBT Student Branch, chairperson of IEEE Superconductivity Council BBT SB Chapter, and general secretary of IEEE SPS BBT SB Chapter. Dear listeners, IELTS, International English Language Testing System, is a globally accepted testing system for accredit accrediting people with second language English. For their proficiency, British, British Council ITP International Development Program, Education Australia and Cambridge English Language Assessment are the joint owners of this testing system. If you want to pursue a university course in English or you want to gain approval for certain visas, you need to pass the course. People who aim to work abroad or study abroad need to be proficient enough in English. And IELTS is used as proof that they have achieved that level of proficiency. It has been said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands that goes to his head if you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Dear all participants, I am welcoming the speaker of today's webinar. The speaker of today's webinar is Afnan Salim. He is an English language trainer at Carrier.com, Bangladesh, invigilator of British Council, SILET, and executive member of Momona. She has the intention to work with honesty, sincerity, and to learn. She is willing to join an organization as a helpful and dedicated member of the team and to prove her potentiality through hard work and efficiency. She was a teacher, head of department of preschool general knowledge at Mahd al, -Al Ulum International School, Jeddah, from May 2014 to April 2015. Also, she was a professional examination proctor since May 2017 to June 2018. She worked as a venue staff for IELTS and CIE examinations and customer services assistance and support, young learners program assistance and supervision, also teaching young learners activity classes for summer school at British Council, Jeta from June 2014 to September 2018. She achieved the first runner-up position in Mentor Speakers Hunt 3.0 in 2019. Also participated in TIB Moot Court in 2019. Empowerment Law of the Common People Virtual Moot Court Competition in 2020. Second international debate held in Pakistan International School, Jeddah. Dear all participants, at the initial stage of the webinar, I request the Assistant Professor of Department of Tripoli, Bidut Sir, for delivering some words about today's webinar. Bidut Sir. Bidu sir, are you hearing me? Uh, sorry, I'm in another meeting. <laughs> oh. Do I have to say something? Yes, sir. I request to talk some words for the webinar. Uh, okay. Uh, so, sorry, I was just attending another meeting. Uh, so, thank you so much for inviting me uh, in your uh, workshop or seminar. 
Uh, yesterday, I just received that uh, 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 mail that you invited me. So, uh, you know the uh, necessity of having uh, IELTS or GRE or some other course to pursue a dream uh, in Europe, America, Australia, or some other countries. As you know, most of the university require at least IELTS or TOEFL. So, for that, you must take good or solid preparation because at least you need to have 6.5 score. So, uh, for if you want to apply in the next uh, uh, upcoming semesters in fall, uh, which is the uh, prime target for all the engineering students or all other all other students from all over the world, then you need to complete uh, uh, IELTS or uh, TOEFL within uh, August or September. So uh, today uh, we have invited uh, uh, an expert uh, uh, from. Uh, see it and uh, she will describe everything although so that's all actually uh thank you again for uh, uh for asking me uh, to join your seminar and thank you all the students uh from BUBT and from other institution for joining this sem seminar thank you all thank you sir for sharing some such valuable words now i request to present the introduction video Thank you. Now I would like to request Afnan Salim to start her demonstration. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, that's great. So good afternoon, everybody. This is Afnan Salim. Um, currently a student in Department of Law and Justice in Metropolitan University and also language trainer. Uh, and recently I have joined the British Council, which is in Sillet. Uh, and before that, I was working as a venue staff member in the British Council, Saudi Arabia. The host has already have given a lot of elaboration about my journey till this time. And I'm very thankful to him actually. So first of all, before beginning the session today, I would like to thank the IEEE UBT uh, student branch uh, along with the uh, student branch chapters, which is uh, PES, SPS, IES, and RFID. Uh, I'm not going for the elaborated form because I want, I hope most of you who are from this student branches, they know the full form. And very, uh, I'm very much thankful to them that they have actually selected me to be a keynote speaker today. And uh, they have taken the initiative which is actually very much important these days. Like uh, you cannot deny the fact that you should have the knowledge of English to acquire whatever achievements you are dreaming of. So uh, from my side, I will try my best uh, to elaborate you, the general concepts uh, from everything. And uh, I would hope all of you who have joined I'm seeing uh, we have uh, 100 uh, of uh, the viewers today. Uh, if I exclude myself, it will be 99. I hope that all of you will stay till the end. And uh, if there is any kind of query, uh, please reach us out. And I'll try my best to actually uh, tell you and to help you out as much as possible. So I would uh, like to uh, ask the host, shall I start my light or we'll be waiting for somebody else to join us is the host listening to me so have you asked something yes uh, i was asking that uh shall i go for the slide presentation because 
I have not given the access to this live presentation yet. Please host, uh, notify, identify the problems, please. Who is the host of the program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have Who is the host access. of this program? Yes, I have access. I think he has opened the access. Yes, I can share the screen right now. Okay. Um. Madam, are you facing any difficulty in presenting your uh, slide? No, at the moment, is my slide visible to you all? Yeah, yes, yes, now we can see, yeah. yes. At least I can see, perhaps everyone can see. Okay, okay. thank you, you can close it. So, is it visible to everybody? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay, that's great, Dan. So, I'll just go through, before going to the agenda, I'll just describe the first uh, slide of my presentation. The terms are the need of IELTS for career building. So many of us, we are still in a confused state that what is career building? Is Will it start when we will be uh, stepping in our professional life or it will be when we will be still a student of third year or fourth year? So let me tell you, in, like from my perspective, what I have been taught that once we are finishing our prime in our uh, life, which is like after 19, actually those who are successful in their life, they have started building their careers or they have actually started planning for career building from that time only. I'm assuming most of us who are viewing today, they have actually across the age of 22, 23 or more. So definitely we all are at the process of career building at the moment. And uh, in this step, while we are the most of us, we are citizens from Bangladesh and maybe some of them who are also from international uh, community who have joined us today, I'm hoping because I had seen some names which didn't seem to be Bangladeshi. Uh, from the first plans. So we all actually are at a level where we need to plan what we should do. So here, in today's webinar, in this session, I will be uh, elaborating one by one, and I'll try my best to go slow. Usually, uh, I speak a little faster, but today I'll try my best to speak slow. So if anybody is facing any kind of problems while I'm speaking, uh, please, uh, I think you should knock the host or you should uh, mm, put us a put a message on the chat box so that we can actually understand. So without further ado, I'll be beginning. The first slide is necessity of proficiency in English. So uh, all of us, we have a notion here that when we are speaking about English, we are thinking about, oh my God, I have so many grammatical methods to learn. I need to know about uh, literature, works, and so and so. But no, today what I'm going to speak is about proficiency. Nobody is going to ask in your career level that are you, unless you are a professor of English or unless you are planning to be an academician who will be practicing English language to teach other people the depth of knowledge of English. Other than that, in all professions, be it a lawyer, be it in engineering firm, be uh, whatever it is, you will be asked and you will be asked to demonstrate your proficiency level, how much proficient you are, how much uh, efficiently you can use your knowledge in practical field, which is related to your field. Definitely, I cannot give a lecture of English literature or a piece of English literature in an engineering class in front of engineering students who are from different countries, right? So the first point here, which I have jotted down at the moment, it is English is a global language. I have already given you a scenario that in a classroom where you will be, where you will be surrounded with people from different countries, you cannot actually go, each of, e go to each of them and learn their own language to deliver your ideas. Or you will not be waiting, your teacher should learn your language and so that you can actually understand him or her. So you need a common media. So this is for the uh, education and all that. But other than that also, if you're meeting some new people who are doing some work, English has turned into a global language at the moment. We have 195 countries and uh, we can see that more than 140 countries, they speak English somewhere around. And many countries, 
have English as their second language. So that means after their mother language, they will be able to communicate in English. Exactly what is expected from us also that we should also know how to communicate in English, at least communicate in a proficient level. Then we are here, studying English can help you get a job. Now, I have uh, come across to many people or many young stars who have actually told me that, uh, ma'am, why or uh, miss, why or Afnan, why should we learn English? Uh, I don't plan to take a job. I don't plan to go to an employer and demonstrate my skills. If, even if you are planning to become an entrepreneur, you are planning to open your own business today or tomorrow, you may take a global approach, right? You may uh, like to uh, convince some international investors to invest in your business, be it a small business, be it a startup or whatever. How will you go to that person? Definitely, you need a common medium of uh, communication, and that's English. Then uh, the third point is learning. Uh, English can help you meet new people. What are we are talking about new people? I'm not telling you to look from the perspective of your own country only because the webinar which is being held it is held by uh, it is organized by uh, um, BUBT many people would be thinking that okay uh, Bangladesh is a small country we meet with everybody we have our Bengali but just you know broaden your horizon think something uh, broader out of the box what if you are meeting with a person who is from India and he also doesn't know Hindi or from Pakistan who doesn't speak Urdu pretty well, definitely you can use English. Or a little bit more broader, you go in an abroad, you go abroad to study, you will face some problems, you will meet new people, you will need to share your ideas, you need to complete your group task. How will you complete them? You need English, right? You need a common medium of uh, instruction or common medium of communication to communicate with them. Um, so definitely it will help you to meet new people because if you are silent, uh, that means you will not be able to be productive. Then we are here on our fourth point, which is um, many scientific papers are written in English. As I'm assuming, and I have presumed last night also, that uh, this webinar, it is concentrated on engineers, right? So many of you will be planning to become a uh, future aspirant uh, researchers, or they are planning to innovate something new, and you have to go through many papers. So unfortunately, uh, all papers are not written in Bengali or in your mother tongue. If you are from Philippines, it's not in Filipino every time. You need to learn, right? So at that time, you can actually go through uh, scientific papers, which are mostly written in English. And we can see it is, and sometimes many greater works are also translated in English. Uh, then I would uh, like to go for my fifth point, which is, which is English is the language of media industry. Now, even though you are engineer or even a person who is a lawyer, he may try uh, to think of, uh, you know, taking a different route to his uh, uh, career. He may think that, okay, fine, today or tomorrow, I will start uh, another uh, career path. I would try another career path. So media is something and we know, right, that media is very much important and also media is very much powerful. So to use this industry or to be in this industry, you need a comp like you need a good command of English because you cannot go to BBC and hire a translator to translate for you. It will be burdensome, right? It will be really burdensome. Or in my case, I feel like it is burdensome for everybody who is trying to hire an hire a translator though so i'll go to my next slide uh, which is necessity of proficiency in english again and i have jotted down only three of ten necessities actually but these are from my point of view these are prerequisite like you need to decide why you are going to learn english why you are going to take ielts test which is based on four modules which will be uh, assessing your four uh, skills that means you have to be good in all, right? It's not about only reading. It's not about only writing. So in number six point, I have entered that English is the language of internet. Like you go to internet and I have seen people who are actually searching for translator to find out their, uh, you know, to find out their point, what they are going to search, to look for their everything. So English is the language of internet 
and uh, you need to be more uh, concerned these days because you may not know something negative also which is been circulated in internet if you are not having the actual command of the language uh, then the seventh point is traveling is a lot easier with a good language uh, good knowledge of english yes definitely you cannot book uh, a ticket in another different country in bengali or in hindi right if you are in uk you will definitely contact uh, like contact with them i was uh, residing in arab country but uh, in uh, airport every uh, individual was able to communicate in good english because they want to help people who are from another country and who cannot speak arabic so definitely your traveling will become a lot easier when you will be having good knowledge of english now in number 8 it is english is one of the most important language for business i remember that our second point or third point is related quite related to it because yes if you are starting and everything is a business right from if you think from your perspective view every one of us we are doing a, some we are connected to some sort of business which has a global approach in 21st century and in 21st century people who will earn more they will learn more so that means if you want to earn enough and you want to become a successful person who is acquiring wealth you need to have knowledge and the doors of knowledge will open uh, more easily i'll not say it will open frequently or it will be open instantly but more frequently if you actually uh, start learning english or take the initiative of learning english from today i hope so you will take it uh, then the ninth point is with english you can study all over the world yes around 140 countries are accepting ielts at the moment and there will be more and we can go through it in another slide and all of them they are actually accepting english as a medium of instruction as well as a, as a medium of teaching another course or a degree and in number 10 we have english gives you access to multiple culture we are living in an era where globalization is the essence i would like to say it like you cannot say yourself that i am a modern person i am a person from 21st century and you have do not have the concept of globalization because it's not only the products we are using it's also about the culture we are taking a uh, culture we are planning to adapt ourselves and so yes if you have english in your uh, knowledge if you have the better command of this language it is easier to understand multiple culture and to actually think and decide which culture you want to adapt and which culture you want to infuse in your own because after a few years we cannot say every culture has their individuality they will have uh, you know interrelated features they will have interrelated relations between each other and we can see the uh, influence already right so now i'll be going to my third slide uh, which is common challenges the necessities are done you must know the reasons that you need uh, to learn english now let's come up to common challenges because every task in the world they have challenges from innovation till learning till solving your analytical skills your critical uh, understanding all these they depend on how much how many challenges and how much uh, uh, willing are you are to accept challenges so i'll be speaking some common challenges because uh, these are pretty common among the people who have english as their second language Uh, the first one is learning the language without a goal now from today or even those who are planning to uh, actually learn english after few days you need to set a goal okay that what you want to achieve i want to become a good speaker that's fine i want to actually uh, share my ideas with everything everyone that's also fine i want to turn myself into a good writer that is also pretty fine but please set a goal because without a goal you will not have the motivation to keep on learning the language you see the mother tongue which is taught to you uh, subconsciously uh, it was taught uh, with a course of 4 to 5 years because until that you were not able to frame sentences you were not able to understand many words many of us we didn't understood what question were asked to us so uh, this is it's not an easy journey you know learning another language not only english even if you plan today to learn taiwanese japanese french you need a goal right that yes today or tomorrow i'll be doing something with the uh, uh, with the language those who are language lovers who 
plan to become bilingual trilingual me myself i speak four languages fluently so that's a different taste but other than that if you are planning to take your second language uh, for example here in bangladesh it is english you need to set a goal that today or tomorrow i want to do something with this language then we have traditional learning method now what happens in traditional learning methods uh, we see that mostly traditional learning methods the teachers they will give you something and you will mug it up you will be memorizing the piece then you will be going for recitation you will be uh, writing it down you know the known scenario whatever has given to you you will be doing that only but this method is somewhere is a challenge to all of us how because we are already used to that and we do not want to come out of it we do not want to take the uh, you know approaches where traditional learning methods are not uh, uh, not utilized at all they are not using it to teach you they will be using practical uh, assessment then they will be using uh, you know more related to something which is about application the knowledge application of the knowledge not just learning it and reciting it not just memorizing it because memory is something uh, you know i have heard many people would know it as well that if you want to know who is uh, who can do who can betray you instantly that's your memory you will be learning it for 100 days and the day of uh, work or at the day of action you will be forgetting right so yes so you cannot depend on your memory every time because we are not computers and even computers sometimes they also get down because of extra there are malfunction and everything so you need to be able to use your la uh, language practically right today if i'm giving you any situation you need to come and you need to give me a reaction that's what a uh, modern approach is rather than traditional learning method then embarrassment everyone make mistake everyone does mistake and everyone mistakenly sometimes uh they do mistake even when they know what is right so do not be like don't be embarrassed this is a very very crucial point of learning the fact that we are embarrassed at that time we are stopping to learn at that time we will be stopping ourselves from achieving something so what happens uh most of us when we are in our 30s or in 20s we are embarrassed because maybe i am not pronouncing like a native uh, uh, speaker maybe i am not uh, like uh, using proper words maybe i am grammatically incorrect so these are not the facts you know these are not the points which should be stopping you from learning a language i would never suggest somebody who is making mistakes grammatically stop speaking i would say speak more because the more you will be speaking the more you will be writing the more you will be reading you will understand and you will point out your mistake by yourself and it is better to make mistakes that means you will be remembering the mistakes more and you will be making correction more often than not enough time now listen you are planning to learn a language you are planning to cover a journey right and here you are not giving you enough time at least an hour you have to find out right at least an hour or 30 minutes those who have more time those who are planning to take a step slow they will take 30 minutes some and are who are in emergency 2 hours 3 hours efficient hours here we are not like talking about enough time that means 5 hours of a day 7 hours of a day no efficient hours where you are learning your brain is effective your brain is trying to grab the information you need to find those time what happens we are making a routine but we don't know the pattern of our learning uh, like our ourselves like which way our brain is adapting some people they are very good at speaking because they think that they are very much expressive so yes you should go for speaking some they are very good writers they can like they, they can write down their ideas instantly so i also just them please start with your writing but when you are effective not only to learn the language but to improve okay so please uh, make sure that you are finding enough time and also efficient and effective method so that you can actually overcome this challenge the lack of interaction you are learning you are watching friends you are uh, going through series but at the end of the day 
you are not finding a person who will be practicing with you it's a common challenge in the countries like us uh, countries of our and everywhere actually where people do not speak english out of their houses so you need to find the, you are the master of your own uh, destiny right so you need to find out the people who will be speaking with you and will have the common goal and this is it you need to do it now i'll go for the uh, fourth slide this is benefits of uh, using english in the workplace now that was our national persona building stuff okay the necessity uh, the goal setting the challenges this is all our personal level now let us speak from the workplace view like point of view where you will be uh, staying in workplace uh, the crucial facts are even in the uh, like even in country like ours where english is not used widely there are some companies who actually not some most of the multinational companies they actually look for people or individuals who have good command on english uh, and in, because it's an international language right so that means when you are uh, writing down on your cv or curriculum vitae or on your resume that uh, i am proficient user of english and you can demonstrate your skills that's a good point for you i think and not i think i believe actually and then effective communication think yourself as an engineer who is uh, uh, having a presentation and uh, you need to de- discuss something with somebody who is from china okay so how will you discuss with that person you will learn chinese within 3 weeks no you need an effective uh, communication method and you need to talk with him because you want to know how your presentation is going to be effective right so yes you'll use english because that person will also know english so that's how your communication will become effective and it will be bilateral communication it will not be only one sided okay then attractive skill set i feel that learning languages is not only a skill it's a whole skill set because when you are giving ielts you are actually proving individual uh, you know there are individual modules individual criteria of testing so you are actually proving that you are not only in uh, like efficient in one skill or you are not only a master of one skill you have uh, you have tried yourself uh, you have tried your level best to acquire knowledge in a full skill set then higher salaries definitely when you we see what the ceos then the uh, high uh, like whoever playing the high roles in an organization they have higher salaries and there is one common thing they are very good communicators first of all second is they have they can express their ideas everywhere so if you have english that means you can actually very you can become an expressive person in any community like you don't need to be in a community which is only based on bengalis or bangladeshis or indians or uh, you know from any other countries or europeans like anywhere you can express yourself and 50% of the pages of, on the internet i have already told you internet is mostly about um uh, english so 50% of the pages like okay fine you can have half of the internet such a huge level of network it can be with you if you have the uh, like common not common the skills of english language so uh, and many more like i can go so for a long time on this i don't want to waste the time at the moment <laughs> uh then i'll be i'll come to our point like today's uh, agenda which is ielts it's international english language testing system now what is ielts it's designed for uh, testing the ability of people who want to study or work where english is used as a language of communication now i have already told you that many people these days they are opting english why because they want to work somewhere else right even in your country if you're working in a multinational uh, company you will be dealing with people who are coming from abroad so definitely english is the uh, language of communication at that place so ielts is designed for that so you do not have to be very much cautious about oh my god i don't know all the grammatical methods oh my god i don't have the idea of uh, shakespeare in every uh, writings of uh, shakespeare's uh, poems or uh, uh, odysseys he have made so it's fine right you can communicate that's it what we need that is what they are testing now why prove your english language skill looking for um, uh, employment abroad and uh, obviously because most of us here we are students this is a very attractive point from my point of view that 
3,400 institutions in U.S. and thousands of institutions in English-speaking countries, including Europe, they actually accept IELTS. So that means if you want to demonstrate your language uh, proficiency, IELTS is not a bad option. You can easily go for it. And those who are opting for in the uh, United States, they can also go for it. So it is quite fine. Uh, then we have IELTS test type. Now, this is where many of us we become confused that, okay, should I go for standard or should I go for UKVI? which is the full form of it, which is United Kingdom visas and uh, immigration. Uh, what happens, uh, like people who are planning or who have planned to go in UK, they will definitely take UKBI. But if you are uncertain, I would suggest, it's just a mere suggestion, but if you are uncertain which country to apply for, and if, if you have not applied it, so better you go for UKVI because every country in the world, including US, they will accept UKVI and also standard. But UK, United Kingdom, they will never accept uh, standard. They will go, uh, they will actually ask you to bring UKVI IELTS uh, test scores. So, and the only difference is that UKVI, it is recorded. It's a video recorded test. Your uh, from the moment you are entering in the test room till the moment you come out, everything will be recorded. And in standard, uh, the centers are responsible for your movements and there is no video recording going on at that time. Uh, and in IELTS test, we have uh, IELTS academic, which is basically for everybody who is even uh, trying to uh, pursue, you know, uh, PhD, masters, bachelors abroad they will go for IELTS academic and someone or somebody or a group of some people who are planning to uh, migrate to a place or even uh, to have, you know, uh, a, a job or employment facility or who want to grab the opportunity of employment abroad in English speaking country, they will go for IELTS general training or which is called GT in short. Okay, uh, then comes my point when and who. Right, when you will plan to give your IELTS. So, please do not uh, encourage a grade 8 student or a grade 9 student. Then they are in their initial time or they are in their initial steps of stepping in higher education. You do not need to give them the burden of uh, you need to learn IELTS, you need to take the test of IELTS. They may need to learn the proficiency of English, but they do not need to take the pressure of IELTS at the moment. Right. Uh, better to decide if you are planning to take admission or if you are planning to apply for scholarships in abroad. IELTS will play a major role at that. And if you're, obviously, if you're planning for migration. So these are the key times when, when, when you need to plan that you need to take the test. Please be clear. I'm not telling to stop uh, your proficiency level or to not be proficient in English. I'm speaking about the test. Which time or which time frame you will consider to sit for your test. At the moment of admission, at the moment when you're planning for scholarship or when you are planning to migrate to another country. And who? IELTS can be taken by anyone in respective of age, gender, race, nationality. It is known to all. But those who are under 16, I have already told you in my, bef uh, the, in my before speed, like last week, that please do not pressurize the people who are 15 or 16 years old. But please give IELTS, give IELTS. No, they do not need to. It's not mandatory for them in many cases. We have a culture of pressurizing teenagers. So that's why I have given you this point, actually. Then uh, what is the educational eligibility to give IELTS? Anyone who wishes. That means even if you are, uh, you have completed your uh, a higher secondary examination and you didn't sit for your bachelor's anywhere, you did not take admission anywhere, you can also take an attempt uh, for IELTS test. Nothing. Nothing is wrong about it. Then how to register? Please make sure to keep your passport handy at the time of registration. Like, uh, you need to have your passport. Although uh, in many uh, uh, like in many scenarios, you, uh, many centers they accept national IDs. But when you are planning for IELTS, especially if you are from a developing country like Bangladesh, India, Philippines, Taiwan, and any other and many more, actually you are deciding to step out of your country. Right. 
uh, although there are opportunities in bangla in your own country in national level of pre- national perspective also but whenever you are planning it is better to have your passport ready because at that time you will be doing registration maybe you are planning to apply for a scholarship uh, which will be offered in january session but uh, you do not have your passport ready and you have actually applied with uh, your uh, nid there will be some issues of affidavit and all other things so we do not want to go through the, those hassles it is better to keep your passport ready and then find out your official british council registration page it is in each country uh, every country wherever british council is there they have the registration page over there you need to find it you need to uh, make an account over there and uh, you know uh, find the nearest test center i have seen once i came to bangladesh what happened i have seen people who are from chittagong okay and uh, they are taking date in silet so they are saying that yes we will be doing a two in one uh, kind of trip like we will be going for a trip and we will also be attempting a test so don't do that find out your nearest test center you know this is an ex- a test where this is a test where you have there is no certainty okay you cannot say for sure that i have read 300 uh, uh, research papers so that means i'll find something common maybe it will be not from your field okay and none of us we will be reading anything from none than our field right so it's better to just take a test center which is near to you or in your division okay do not go for uh, something which is where you need to make a journey for at least uh, 17 hours and your test is after 2 days so a uh, new circumstances everything new it will be actually uh, i feel like it hinders the capability of the candidate i have seen people and they were not doing well this decision has made if they are at band 6 they become 5.5 if they are band 7 uh, in most cases it actually causes the degradation of the uh, score rather than increasing the score okay because there is an excitement in your head also right after finishing my ielts test i will go and i'll have some fun so that fun part is actually cutting you off from showing your proficiency and those who are below now in some scenarios if you have finished your higher secondary after completing uh, maybe after uh, your 17 years like you are 17 years old and you have already finished your higher secondary in that case if you are planning to take an ielts uh, test you need your guardians like your legal guardian not only your parents maybe your uncle or maybe somebody who is legal guardian of yours uh, they need to give you a written confirmation and only that uh, only then only the centers will uh, actually approve you to take the test so that means if you are below 18 you need to figure out some uh, you know legal uh, documentation so that's very simple if british council will provide you with the consent form and everything so there's nothing to think you know no need to take uh, pressure about it if you are under 18 or if you're if you have any siblings who is under 18 and he or she is planning to take the test understand nothing um, it's not a major issue and once you register you can uh, you can pay either online or offline so when i'm using online or offline means online means you will be using a visa or credit card to pay your payment and offline means you will go to the office or you will go to the paying section and you will be paying it so then i'll be uh, going for my next uh, slide like what's in the test i many of us we have heard the name okay international english language testing system but uh, what's in the test actually so three tests which is listening reading and writing will be taken on the same will be taken on the same day you don't uh, need to be having any doubt in this fact okay listening reading and writing without any mishap uh, they will be taken on the same day uh, and they will be taken at a stretch you will not be having like uh, listening one hour then you will have a break of 10 or uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes no not like that it will be taken at a stretch once your listening is done there will be reading reading is done there will be writing so you don't need to wait okay you have to that's why it's tough i feel like that because once your module is changing your brain is changing its patterns so you have to be very flexible about it there are people who will receive nine at listening 
but in reading they'll receive a uh, 5.5 why their brain were not functioning or they were brain the the brain was not functioning quite fast enough how it functioned in listening because the brain is totally changing every scenario in listening you are using our uh, audio we are actually using our audio uh, capacity also our visual capacity everything right uh, all senses are active when we are going for reading it's only what we are writing and what we are seeing right we are solving so see the brain it while it was very much active it has become very slow for some reason and uh, again we have 40 40 questions the question the contents whatever we talk in listening you will give, be given extra 10 minutes after 30 minutes the 10 minutes which will be for transferring your answers uh, in reading 60 minutes at a rest stretch and uh, there will be no transferring time like there will be no transfer time you have to transfer your answers uh, eventually okay. while you are reading it then we will have uh, writing we'll have two tasks task 1 and task 2 uh, so now there are differences when while i was giving you the test types for ta- uh, in academic and general in reading and writing the gt version and the academic versions are different okay so the gt version will be lot more easier than the academic version the general training version what i'm speaking and listening and speaking both the versions they are quite similar be it general be it academic both are similar so you do not have like whatever preparation you are taking for listening and speaking either you be a general candidate or a academic candidate it is quite okay for you like these modules will have no difference um then we'll have a result see uh, if you go in official site of british council or idp they have from zero but i have here i have just made it uh, like uh, in a zest form so it's from level 5 band score of 5 till band score of 9 now why from band score of 5 till band score of 9 you know whoever is planning to apply abroad or even whoever whoever is planning for uh, getting a job in a good multinational company they expect you to be already uh, our sir uh, he has mentioned that you have to be at the level of 6.5 so yes but let us begin from 5 because uh, many universities they like they accept if your modules are not less than 5.5 so i'll be showing you the criteria where you will be understanding what is your goal and what level you should be okay so let us begin from 9 expert user that means when we are talking about somebody who is expert he will have total operational command what do we mean by our total operational command he or she will have the knowledge of operating the language in any circumstances while not making any mistakes uh, while being appropriate like you will not many of us there are people who actually say i will be learning english from movies so just think about a scenario you are in office you cannot go to your boss and you cannot say hey mr uh, john uh, are you well today no that's not the etiquette we are talking about the etic- etiquette over here the expert users they will have uh, the knowledge of etiquette how to use the language with complete understanding and in own field you know in own field means even in writing there is a pattern you have there are informal writings there are formal writing uh, there, there there are some words which are not used in uh, writing while we speak while we use them while we are communicating with somebody in verbal form so you have to be very much you know the people who are the candidates who are receiving 8 they uh, or 9 they have this kind of uh, like uh, uh, then so by 8 and 9 even in 8 are some common mistakes acquire in a we have occasional unmen uh, mistake so now that is some say even band now you accept nine every Maybe internet issue. Our speaker will be back soon, inshallah.
please keep patience it is the internet issue our speaker will be back soon inshallah We cannot hear you, Apu. Rivon, is she in the meeting? She is still presenting or what? But we are not hearing. Uh, me too, cannot hear her. Okay, am I visible? Yes, now you are audible. Yes, okay, okay. Is my presentation visible at the moment? Yes, yes. yes. It is visible. Okay. I'm really sorry for the disruption. Uh, okay. I was on my eight. Nine. Okay. Okay, it was on the compete and use of path. So, like when you are competent, you can actually in familiar situation, you can use your language without being misunderstood by somebody or without misunderstanding somebody. And when we are talking about modest user, they have the basic communication uh, level. They can communicate in a basic level. They can work out the language, although they'll make lots of mistakes. So initially, who are from English speaking, who are not from English speaking country, and English is our second language, we are modest users of uh, English. So you do not have to be uh, thinking yourself as a bad, like, oh my God, uh, will I be able to uh, speak English or not? Like, you are a modest user. So it's the beginning. Uh, then we have how IELTS band score is calculated. So the scores, when we are talking about scores, uh, it's overall band score and their average score of all skill, skills, uh, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. So even if you receive an eight and you are receiving a 5.5 in speaking or a 5.5 in writing, that will affect your overall score, okay? It will not be easier for you to actually cope up with this. So you have to be very much uh, you know, focused on all modules. You cannot be just focused on one thing or one skill. That's why it's a little bit challenging to everybody who is actually planning to take an IELTS. Then I have just, for the initial step, I have just added the, you know, uh, this uh, structure, fee structure, uh, because many of us, we actually need to prepare our finances as well, right? When we are planning this, you need to, to give the uh, just, uh, maintenance, how we will be studying and, and all that. So, yes, we have uh, academic. Basically, these days, there are computer-delivered tests also in IELTS. So, we can see that academic, general, academic, you know, there are the fee structure over here, it's in Bangladeshi, you see, as well as in uh, uh, pounds and dollars. Why I have added it? Because those who are planning uh, to pay online through their, you know, acquaintance in abroad, they can actually tell them the fees which is mentioned internationally. So there's a difference of uh, UKVI payment and uh, academic or general training is standard bills. So you can see the differences. Well, if you are applying to for standard in both cases, for general and academic, you'll be paying 18,750. And if you're planning for UKVI, which is UK visas of immigration purpose, you'll be paying 21,100 uh, Bangladeshi taka. And uh, pounds 160 and 180 around you can say the round figure of 161 or 181 
uh, if you're applying for dollars, one twenty two is a safe option actually. Uh, the rounded figures uh, for UK VI, uh, one for two forty nine or two fifty is best actually. So this is it, and uh, I this is from my part. I have tried my like uh, best to give you an idea about the whole journey of fire. Uh, then sir, uh, is there anything you can ask? Please ask. Are you done, Apu? Yes, I have already told that this what is, is the time my end. It's five twenty-eight. If you have any questions, please put your questions in the chat box, or you can uh, ask questions directly to the speaker. Don't you have any Nobody, questions? Nobody has no question. I think. <laughs> Do you have any question? Anyone from the audience? If you have any question, you can put your question in the chat box. Or you can ask. Okay. So if anybody has no question, uh, uh, I I have a query actually. So if you want, uh, yeah, yeah, I may proceed. Okay. So during the COVID situation, actually, uh, you, uh, most of the IELTS center are closed. I think. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what is the what is their actually uh, uh, their initiative uh, till uh, actually in November? Because most most of the university deadline is in November, perhaps. So, if uh, any students wants to apply in those universities, so they need mm -hmm. to have their IELTS score ready by November, I think. So, uh, what is the uh, you know uh, steps of the uh, British Council or other IELTS taking center that uh, how they can apply? I'm just wondering if they uh, will take the examination online or uh, we have to appear for the examination physically in the center. If you could ask. Now, actually, British. Simon, I think again, technical problem. I think I cannot hear anywhere. I think she will join. I have came across the people who are uh, planning to go in Germany and they face the. So, Ms. Uh, actually, I could not hear you from the beginning. Uh, if you could answer uh, it again. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, what yeah, happened here, yeah, in Bangladesh at the moment, we, uh, the individuals test at their home, it's not available yet. Yeah, they are, there are computer-based tests in IELTS also, and they prefer it to go to the test centers, and uh, these people are very less. So in Dhaka, after the lockdown, they'll open it again. Mm, but in most scenarios, what we see that these days after this pandemic many universities they give you a timeline okay they will ask you for the ielts uh, uh, result but you can apply without your test results but they will give you a time frame within which time you should apply and if there is a pandemic that means we are until there is a lockdown a total complete lockdown councils will not stop taking the test for example if you see this now these scenarios Many uh, airlines and many, uh, you know, uh, many travel agencies, they are, they, cannot, they are not able to give you air tickets to another many countries because they have closed their boundaries. So even though when you are planning to sit for the test and everything, you have to wait because this situation is unprecedented. The situation is totally unprecedented. We have yes, uh, no idea when the borders are open because many countries are still not taking students. They have given them offer letters. They have given them the... Uh, student permit and everything, but they are making them wait because the borders are not open yet. Yes, I have seen a lot of Bangladeshi students are leaving this year. They are very fortunate actually uh, because uh, border is open for uh, airlines are open for Bangladeshi students. Still, they are traveling, and uh, US uh, visa embassy also are granting or approving visas. 
there is another test because they are going giving in Canada and USA. Unfortunately, many European universities they didn't give it, like uh, they didn't allow it. Again, when we are going for OICC, it's, a, it's an internal test. So UK universities they give this option, but best is to prepare for your IELTS. Those who are not at the breach of ending their degrees, for example, the fourth year candidates, fourth fourth year students, or a professional, I believe that if you prepare from now, after, eventually after one month or two months there will be tests, right? And there will be free. Remember, I think I hope so. Everything will come back to normal. Let's hope for the best. Yes, uh, but you know, uh, most of the students are waiting for uh, sitting for the IELTS test. So I think the seats are limited. So if they occupy all the seats, then what will happen with of the rest of the students? Will they, you know, uh, increase the seat capacity uh, during the test? Definitely, they will because uh, we need to cover right. Or there will be alternative ways which will be planned out because situation will teach us. We are doing a seminar online. Before some days, there would be sessions and webinar. Like most of the national seminars, what I have joined, we need to go to the place. We need to sit and we would see the speaker. So right. yeah, situation will demand. Yes, I think the demands uh, of the situation yeah. will tell us. I think uh, if the British Council or other uh, test cent uh, centers are allowing the students for online based IELTS examination, I think that will be convenient for all the students. Some countries are doing. The problem is in our country and our country, uh, I'm trying to mean by developing countries, for example, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Like, we have a reputation of uh, trying proxies. You know what do I mean, what I meant? I can understand. We like others, uh, we like others do our stuff. I've seen it in so here. We don't have that trust. Right. Yeah. That's why GED was closed, right? That's why the reason GED right, results right, are not right, accepted yes. in many universities now. Only because of this proxy problem. So they are not allowing us yet. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you so much for answering my question. Thank you, sir. So I'm done with my question. If anybody else have any question, anybody else in the audience? I can see three questions from the chat box. Uh, first question from Mehdi Hassan Rifat. He yeah. asked me, is there any special books which we can read to do well in our IELTS exam? Special books. Okay. It is recommended to read uh, Cambridge uh, certified books, which is uh, like from it's very available everywhere in Bangladesh. So many people, out of their excitement, they buy one to 15 uh, uh, series and they finish it all. They memorize it all. What I am saying that. Uh, we have this tendency, right, to memorize everything. But no, uh, if you practice two or three books properly while understanding the modules, and if you're planning to take your IELTS after three months, four months, from now on, start reading different journals from uh, different countries, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, Guardian, Diplomat, uh, BBC for B BBC learnings and BBC cha uh, news channels to understand the accent they're using. So Australian English series, uh, then we have Canadian English series because why listening test is going on. Uh, there are different kinds of accents uh, which are used uh, while delivering the listening test to the candidates. So it is better, you know, to take an overall concept rather than depending on some materials only. I have seen people, they're saying, how will I get eight, a band score of eight? Maybe I'll finish 20 books and I'll get an eight. No, no, I'm really sorry, you cannot get that. It is better to use Cambridge certified materials while understanding. And uh, there is a uh, uh, book IELTS, I'll, I'll actually provide it uh, because there are many materials we follow. You know, Barron's, then uh, a lot, lot. Lots of things. And if you are constantly with the uh, language, you'll automatically, you know, you will explore the, uh, what I would say, materials. But only specific book, okay, fine. If you read this book, many people these days, they actually follow Makar. Like it's an Indian uh, writer's book. Basically, she's just copy pasting the, uh, you know, m most of the uh, topics. And we think if we are reading it and we'll get an eight. No, that's not the case. If Even if you practice five books, 
from series 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six books, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Five to six books is more than enough to get a good score. Only if you are practicing with, you know, efficiency. Whatever you are learning, you need to maintain your time sense. You need to understand when you are going to write down your uh, answers. Uh, very much uh, vigilant about uh, timekeeping. Like many of us, we are very good readers, but we'll read in depth. You are going through a sentence, you will first start imagining. No, we don't need that. You need to find out the answers while reading the questions, while also checking the paragraphs. So it's a bit of time, you know, time management, what you need to, con what you need to consider most if you want to ace an IELTS test. Or else everything is fine. Materials you can you'll find lots of materials. If you just go through the online uh, Amazon and everything, there will be materials which will be claiming you will get an eight if you study this. But actually, there is nothing like that. You just need to go to the Cambridge certified books, and that is more than enough. I have actually given my IELTS, and I have gave like I gave like this only. It was pretty good. The experience was not bad. Any more questions? Second question is from Nusrat Jahan Tisha. Can you give mm -hmm. some advice, please? How can I better my spoken English? Okay. Okay. How can you better your speaking skills? Okay. For the betterment of speaking, from today on, uh, you know, uh, stop hesitating. That's the first and foremost. Uh, find out some friends. Who are like-minded like you who are like-minded like you means who will be practicing with you you know even you are making jokes try to make it in english because speaking english that means you want to you know be confident while speaking so yes for some like-minded people and uh, it is better if you find somebody who is a native speaker so he or she will give you uh, the knowledge of colloquial uh, terms like when you speak there are some terms which we don't write so how will we learn uh, without practicing? And first and foremost, and the last resolution is practice. You have to practice. Mirror practicing, do it. Practicing with a person you don't know, do it. You see someone who is speaking good English, go to him or her. Tell them that I want to speak with you for five minutes. I want to check myself. I'm pretty sure some will deny, other will help you out. But reach out people. You need to reach out people to actually make sure that yes, you want for your betterment just like you know if you want to know better you need to ask more questions so that's how you will be better in speaking thank you You're welcome then a lot of questions is gathering in the chat box uh, i will ask you another question from Mari Jane Sakai, do you have a sample of an IELTS test? And if yes, would you also have a copy? Okay. Can you uh, just pronounce it? Okay, let me check the chat box. It's better actually. Um, what's the name again? Mary Jane Sakai. Miss, I will repeat the question. Yes, yes, definitely repeat the question. Mary Jane Sakai. Do you have a sample of an IELTS test? And if yes, could you also have a copy? Could you also have a copy? I think she tried to ask that could we have a copy? Because IELTS test, sample tests, they're everywhere. Uh, in online, every uh, even many YouTube channels are there who are actually providing because many centers, they actually give the uh, IELTS test questions to their, uh, you know, subordinates to, you know, work with them to make improvement for their uh, students who are actually taking lessons from them, especially in our country. So, yes, you will have it. But uh, to provide it to everybody, sometimes there are many confidential materials which we are not allowed to give to other people uh, rather than without the confirmation from our, you know, from our superiors. But yes, we do have it, and uh, it's good for practicing, definitely. And you'll find lots of it online. There are many websites which are providing questions. So it's good. And these are authentic, actually, not unauthentic. 
You're welcome, Mary. Any more questions? Then another question is from Mehdi Hassan Rifat. He asked, make, hmm. make why the IELTS certificate's validity is for two years only? Why not more? Why not more? Uh, his name, please, again. What's his name? Mehdi Hassan Rifat. Hmm, Mehdi. Okay. So I'll just call him Mehdi. Uh, Mehdi, what happens, our skills, they may become rusty. You cannot say if you're not living in a country where, which is not an uh, English-speaking country, uh, that what you have learned today, after two years, you will be having the same, you know, same potentiality and everything. Uh, maybe today you are 6.5, and after two years, you are an 8. So there is a job uh, opening, and they are require you to have a band score of 8. So if I give you an uh, eternal result, if the IELTS British Council or IDP, they give you eternal result. What I'm, what I, what I'm trying to uh, mean by the word eternal is, you know, your bachelor's degree, it is eternal. Until you die, once you receive your bachelor's degree, BSc in engineering, LLB, whatever, it is not going to change. Okay. But these skills, uh, speaking, listening, writing, these are professional skills. And we become better. The more we practice, we'll become more better. So... Giving you an eternal score, like for your whole lifetime, once you have given your IELTS, you will have a 6.5. It's not worth it. And I think like after each two years, you will see the difference if you're practicing and if you're not practicing. Because I have seen candidates who received six. After two years, they applied for IELTS and uh, they received eight. Again, the candidates who received eight, they didn't practice. They went to places where there were no practicing uh, scope for them. They received less. Okay? So... Nothing to worry. It's fine. Okay. That's the reason they're not giving you an eternal result. Okay. Thank you. Then uh, I think he is in need. Uh, Bhaiya asked, Assalamu alaikum. I will go to Germany for MBA course. So please tell me process how to apply in German. Another question is, am I apply German university with I, without IELTS? There are some universities in European countries who act like who do not uh, mention that you don't you, you don't you need an IELTS, but uh, it's quite hard to require a visa to acquire a visa actually, because the visa officers sometimes uh, they actually point out the criteria that you do not have an IELTS. So the candidate who is having six point like three point five in his bachelor's and he wants to go for an MSc. And the candidate who is having 3.4, I guess, and he has an IELTS of 8, and he has a, he has a band score of 8. So most probably, the decision of visa officer will be on behalf of the candidate who is having an IELTS. So it is a better option, actually. Till now, let's see what happens after the pandemic, okay? Let us not come to conclusions so easily these days. So just wait and see what happens. But this is a better option to... Like, prepare yourself for IELTS because once you prepare, you are preparing for an overall skill set. It's fine. Thank you. Then, uh, a lecturer of Department of CSC, Miss, asked, I'd like to ask some questions. I need to speak. Please, ma'am. Hmm. Okay, please. What is Stephanie? Miss, are you here? Okay. Sean asked when the perfect time for do the exam. Again, please. I didn't understand. Sean asked uh, when is the per perfect time for doing the exam. He means when for, for taking the exam. You are sitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every month. Because of this pandemic, many things have changed. So I'm let's just not take the exception as an example. This is an exceptional situation for us now. So leave it out. Every month, there are at least four tests. So what happens in GRE or TOEFL, they have, uh, I, at the moment, I'm not able to recall. But in GRE, they have some, uh, you know, numbers that till this time, uh, this many time, you can take the test. But IELTS has opened the doors every, 
has the doors open every time. You can sit for the test any moment, at any time. You just need to pay. Uh, most of mostly many candidates prefer to make a registration before two months, and that's it. And what is the best time when you are prepared, when you are confident? If you are confident in December, sit for December. Uh, sit, December uh, sit in December. If you are confident that I'll be registering after two months and in, it is November, do it. There is like no perfect timing. Like okay, I'll sit for that time. I'll sit for this time. It is not like that, because the questions will be different. It will be coming from the Cambridge. They have nothing to do with it. It's an instantaneous exam. You will just need to work out your own knowledge at that time. So it is open. Just prepare yourself and sit for it. Be confident enough. That's it. Okay. Now thank you, thank you, Akram Salim Apu, for your enlightening presentation. Uh, we are impressed having a great session. I think the participants learned a lot today and will be much benefited through the webinar. Thank you. Okay. Now I would like to request to present the crest of appreciation. This won't be virtual, you see. I would have it as a souvenir in my room. Okay. Thank you. That's all actually we could do during the pandemic situation. Yeah, that's what so this is the pandemic situation, sir. Yes. It would be a souvenir in my room now, but unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. And in future, hope you will join us again if, if we want to um, add in such kind of program again. And Definitely. you are really insightful and valuable. I hope our students will follow all the instruction you have given in the uh, seminar. Thank you so much from on behalf of the students and on behalf of us. Thank you so much. I'm grateful that I have been uh, given this opportunity. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask Tashinu Rahman, Chair of IEEE SPS BUT SP Chapter, to express his perceptions about today's event. Tashinu Rahman, bro. Okay. Shari Alam, are you here? Shari Alam? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you can take it. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you everyone for such a wonderful work webinar. Uh, dear Afnan Salim Apu, on behalf of everyone here today, thank you for your taking the time to speak with us today on a very important topic that needs of IELTS for career building. Your comments on how, how to prepare, proceed and understand the need of IELTS is sure a great contribution for us. And presentation is currently inspirable. And we thank you for what you did for others. Once again, on behalf of IEEE BOBT student branch. Thank you so much. Thank you once again to all the honorable guests, faculty members, and students for your cooperation. There is a must for all time. It has been a pleasure being with all of you today. And again, thank you for your patience. I wish you all a very good evening. Stay safe and stay well. And this is the ending moment of today's event. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, sir, you are also thanked.